This ultra indulgent Hungarian hazelnut and chocolate layer cake is an absolute treat. Also known as this, it's made up of soft layers of hazelnut duck wass. I think I'm saying that right. And a silky smooth hazelnut praline chocolate pastry cream. And it's topped with a chocolate and vanilla glaze. But if that wasn't already indulgent enough, it's coated in more toasted hazelnuts. Speaking of, let's start with those hazelnuts. So you wanna add some hazelnuts to a baking tray and you're gonna bake these for about 20 minutes on 180 degrees Celsius. Once they're nice and golden, they're good to go. Let's move on to the praline section of this. So we're gonna be adding some sugar, water, a pinch of salt, and about a cup of those toasted hazelnuts in there. And we're gonna mix this until it just begins to bubble. Then we're going to add some glucose syrup, which is going to help prevent this from crystallizing too quickly because we're going to be stirring this. As we stir, after about three or four minutes, this is going to go a nice deep golden color. We're going to take it off the heat, add in some bicarb soda, which is going to help aerate it, mix it in and then pour it out onto a baking tray. Let this set for about 20 minutes at room temperature until it goes nice and hard. Once it has, add it to the bowl of a food processor and process it until it goes into a paste or liquid consistency. At first it feels like that's not going to happen, but after a couple minutes you want to stop, scrape down and then continue until it does form a paste. Set this aside because we're going to move on to making that delicious chocolate pastry cream. Add some sugar, cocoa powder, some flour and some cornstarch to a large mixing bowl use a whisk to combine everything i forgot to add the salt in there so i'm going to add that in there as well then we're going to add our egg yolks nine to be exact and yes it's a lot of egg yolks but we're actually going to be using the white to make the duquoise duquoise cake part of the recipe I just gave that a bit of a whisk before I realized there needed to be a little bit of milk in there. So I'm going to add a little bit of warm milk, give it a whisk and then add the remaining warm milk. Pour that into a medium sized saucepan and mix this on medium heat until it thickens. Once you can scrape your finger on the back of your spoon and it makes a line, it's good to go. Take it off the heat and add your butter, which is chilled and I've just cut into cubes, about a third at a time. So add a third in there, mix it, add the next third and repeat that until it's all in there. The reason why you want to do this slowly is because you add all of the butter at once, you risk your mixture splitting. Pour that into a bowl and then cover it with some plastic wrap and set it aside in the fridge to chill, about four hours or overnight. Once it has chilled, add it back into a food processor and we're going to mix this until it's really super smooth. This is the way that I've found to get really smooth custard. You can run it through a sift if you don't have a food processor, but for this recipe you'll be using a food processor quite a bit. Once it's nice and smooth, add your hazelnut paste and then continue mixing that in, scraping down at least once until you end up with this, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous, smooth silky smooth chocolate hazelnut custard. Set that aside in the fridge until it's ready to be used and we're going to add the rest of our toasted hazelnuts into the bowl of a food processor and we're going to process this until we reach fine crumbs. Set two cups of this aside and with the rest you need to add in about a third cup of all-purpose flour. Mix this until it's well combined to the bowl of a stand mixer, we're going to be using some egg whites and some sugar. Add those in there and we're going to whisk this using a whisk attachment until it's nice and fluffy. Thick and glossy to be exact. Add a dash of vanilla extract and some salt. Whisk that for another 20 to 30 seconds. Then you want to add the rest of your crumbed toasted hazelnuts and another third cup of flour. And we're going to switch over to a spatula and fold this through until it's all well combined. 
While you're folding through, just to note you want to do this gently so that you don't risk deflating your beautifully whipped egg whites. This cake is going to be made up of four layers, so we're going to need four 8 inch cake tins. You want to spray just the bottom and not the sides of your cake tins so that you want to actually make sure your cake does stick to the sides because as it bakes and then cools down, it's going to stick to the side and then not contract and come away from the side as it cools. That way it holds its shape nicely. I've added my mixture into a piping bag and we're going to pipe some snails of that batter into each cake tin. This is going to go in the oven for 15 minutes on 150 degrees Celsius. To put this cake together, we're going to need an 8 inch spring form cake tin. Undo the cake tin and add a large piece of baking paper on the side and then put the sides back on and tighten the clasp. Gently run a knife around the edge of your cake tins just to loosen the cakes. Flip them over and peel away the baking paper. Add the first layer of cake to the bottom of your springform pan. And guys, we're going to be using some acetate today, which is about 3 inches in height and about 25 inches in length. This is going to help our cake set beautifully and we're going to be able to peel this away once we're done with the setting stage. You want to add the acetate in once you've added the first layer because it's going to help it stay in place. Add about a quarter of your hazelnut chocolate pastry cream and spread it around. Now if you don't have an offset spatula, you can just use a tablespoon which you can gently and carefully bend and this is going to help you spread it around. And once you're done, you can just bend it back. Add your next layer of cake and repeat that until you get to the final layer of cake. I'm going to set this aside in the fridge. I'm going to show you how to make the glaze that's going to go on top. It's really, really simple. Let me show you how to make the chocolate one. It's powdered sugar and cocoa powder, which you're going to mix together and then add some melted butter. You're going to whisk that until it forms kind of a glaze consistency. And so this is the chocolate one. And to make the vanilla one, it's basically the exact same thing minus the cocoa powder. So you're going to pour that on top of your cake. Then we're going to add the chocolate one into a piping bag and pipe lines on top. Using a skewer or a toothpick, we're going to go across in the opposite direction. And then this is going to go in the fridge to chill for about four hours or overnight. Once it's chilled, take it out of the springform pan and slowly peel away that acetate. So see the acetate actually helped keep our cake together. Transfer it to your serving plate using the excess baking paper. We're going to finish this off by using the rest of the custard or pastry cream to frost it around the sides of the cake. And that's going to help the rest of our toasted hazelnut to stick to the side of the cake. I know this was a lot guys, but this cake is absolutely phenomenal and it's definitely a weekend project. If you want to give this recipe a go and it's totally worth it, the recipe is on my website, thescranline.com. Link for that is in the box below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and I think I want to show you guys what is coming up on the next episode of The Scranline Every Day, which is my savory channel. This week, I am going to show you guys how to make my delicious oven baked fish fingers. These are so delicious. They're oven baked. They're a little bit healthier than deep frying. And I'm going to show you guys how to make my homemade tartar sauce. This is so much better than store bought. It's almost as quick as opening up the jar. And it's just the best accompaniment to these fish fingers. If you want to grab that recipe and watch the video, Head on into the description box, click on the link, it will take you to my second channel, which is my savory recipes. Make sure you subscribe to that, and I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scranline.